Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about A Streetcar Named Desire, written by Tennessee Williams. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, wow. This play, um... There's a lot going on here. There, there's a lot that happens within this play. Um, Tennessee Williams, he doesn't make things easy for me. I mean, I feel like he was just writing these plays to kind of like give me so much information so that my head would explode. Uh, because there's just so much going on in this play. Um, it's like, you know, this play is this representation of times changing and you know if you don't change with the times uh you pretty much get destroyed you get burned and you don't survive um so you know we'll get to my perspective and to, to my ideas about this play in in the analysis and I'll, t I'll talk to you guys about my perspective on this play, but um, let's go into the summary. Let's do that. Um, so right from the get-go, uh, we meet Stella. Stella is, well, in this play, Stella is this woman that is from money. She's, you know, a sovereign belle. She, she comes from money. I mean, she used to live in a mansion, right? She used to live in a mansion called uh, Belle Reve, which in French, you would say Belle Reve, which means beautiful dream. Um, and basically, before her family lost their finances and their, their wealth, Stella leaves, um, Laurel, Mississippi, and she moves to New Orleans, and she marries Stanley Kowalski. Uh, Stella is a very submissive, uh, woman, but she's a very smart woman, because in my perspective, I think... The reason why she leaves home in, in, in the play and marries Stanley is because Stanley Kowalski is an individual that is willing to fight for what's his. Um, you know, he's not going to let anybody pull anything on him. And I think that's what Stella's family was missing because they were losing their finances and they didn't stand up to fight for it to keep it. Uh, and so they lost everything. They lost Bell Rev, Bell Reeve, and um, you know all of their money. But Stanley Kowalski, from the get go, you can see he's a man. He is going to fight for every single dollar um, that is his that he earns. Uh, so I really think one of the reasons why Stella and Stanley are are together within this place because of that because. Stella's family lost their their hunger to fight for what's theirs, and Stanley did not. And Stella is attracted to that i to that i that fact that idea. So Stella, at the beginning of the play, she's she's married in New Orleans. She's with Stanley Kowalski, and life is wonderful. Well, not wonderful. I guess wonderful enough for them. They live in a in in the French Quarter in a poor, well. It's not so well off. It's not a amazing neighborhood. Uh, they they live in a very bad apartment. It's not really that well furnished. They don't have servants. I mean, Stella is coming from money, so this is a massive drop for her. Um, I guess this type of lifestyle would be usual, uh, would be normal for Stanley Kowalski, but for for Stella, who's a sovereign belle, who's coming from, um, you know, the upper class. Uh, in her society, this is a massive step down, but she adjusts, she um, adapts very well. Um, her relationship with Stanley is very rocky. Stanley is a caveman. Stanley Kowalski is a caveman. I mean, at the beginning of the play, he comes in with a bloody meat package and chucks it to Stella and says, here, you know, so... Right from the get-go, you get the idea that he is the king of this two-bedroom apartment that they live in. Uh, he doesn't want to be challenged by anybody. Uh, he's loud, he's violent, he's brutal. Um, domestic violence, you know, takes place within this household. 
and they also have a lot of sex, and that's how they kind of like deal with their problems. When they get into a fight, they fight, they scream, they break things, and then they have sex to kind of make it all better. Uh, so their relationship is very physical, very violent, physical in every in every way. That's how they live, and I don't know if that's sustainable, but that's the relationship we're introduced to. We're also told that um, Stella's pregnant. So for Stella and Stanley, this works. This relationship works because Stanley gets to be king. He's the only person working in this household, so he holds the power. The per, he holds the purse strings. He's in control of the household. Stella is submissive. Um, she just follows his lead, and I mean, he, she, Stella is in love with Stanley. Um, that's what she tells us, and I also would say that Stella is with Stanley because she has nothing else. Um, this is the last stop for her. She has to make this work because if she's not with Stanley, then she's on her own. Um, she doesn't have her family to rely on. And at least this man who's who's lion like will fight and this man loves her in his own way and maybe she sees like Stella sees like you know she'll get some protection from from Stanley Kowalski. Uh so and Stanley Kowalski for him he gets to be king of this two bedroom apartment and, and dominate Stella. And Stella just allows him to dominate her. So that's the reality that exists within this couple, um, Stanley has friends. We can see them, you know, within this play. They, they play po poker games, um, sometimes in the two-bedroom apartment. Uh, and so, at the beginning of the play, you know, everything is wonderful because Stella and Stanley, they make it work for each other. And although I wouldn't say they're 100% happy, but it's good enough. It's good enough to survive. It's good enough. Um... Well, it doesn't stay like that, because uh, Blanche comes. Blanche is Stella's sister, older sister. I would say she's in her 30s, um, but Blanche would not want you to think that, because uh, we, we know that, that uh, Stella's 25 and Blanche is the older sister, so Blanche would have to be um, in her 30s. Um, I'm just going to give you guys the, the background on Blanche, um, and Stanley's the one who figures out all of this. Um, uh, all this information. Uh, Blanche stayed at Belle Reve, and you know the the Belle Reve mansion was foreclosed upon, and the creditors. I would think the the bank took it from from Blanche, um, and she was kicked out. Uh, so she she had a teaching job. She was an English teacher, uh, but she ends up having a sexual relationship, a relationship with a 17-year-old student, uh, a male student, and um, she gets fired and she loses her job uh, because of that. And yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, she gets fired for that. Um, then she moves into the Flamingo Hotel, and she and, and the Flamingo Hotel is already a shady hotel. A lot of, you know, uh, a lot of bad things happen there, but... Blanche gets kicked out of that, too, because she's having a lot of suitors, and pretty much her name starts to get tossed around like she's a prostitute, or she gets involved into... It's not, like, said extremely clearly, but you can get the idea that she's been around, okay? Blanche has been around, and she has a reputation of being with several men, having several suitors, and maybe, you know, they've known her too well. Okay, uh, and this is all happening in Laurel, Mississippi. So, as you can imagine, after losing Belle Reve, Blanche doesn't come to, to visit Stella right away. Um, she comes to visit Stella as the last stop, right? Because she loses the home, she loses, uh, the, well, she loses Belle Reve, she loses the mansion, she loses her job, she gets kicked out of Laurel, Mississippi, she gets kicked out of the Flamingo Hotel, and all of this bad history, all of this bad... Uh, reputation is pretty much kicks her out, kicks her out of her her hometown, kick, kicks her out of uh, Laurel, Mississippi, and she's like, I have nowhere else to go, I have no money, um, and she like 
grabs her clothes and some valuable items to her, and she goes in to see her sister. Um, she gets welcomed by Stella, but after she gets welcomed by Stella, she gets welcomed to the king of the jungle. Oh, my God. She gets welcomed to Stanley Kowalski. Stanley Kowalski is a former soldier. He likes honesty. He likes the truth. And Blanche is not about the truth. Blanche is about illusions, right? Um, Blanche, pretty much, she could be homeless. But she's not because Stella takes her in and Stanley allows her to live in his two-bedroom apartment. But Blanche is judging and critiquing everything. She's like, ugh, you don't have any servants. This apartment is tiny. It's nasty. It's dirty. You're married. You know, this is what Blanche is telling to Stella. You know, you're married to a brute. You're married to a caveman. He's not smart. He's not classy. He's not part of the upper class. He's low. We should leave. You should get divorced. We should take the baby because we, you know, Blanche learns that Stella is pregnant. You know, we should run, run, leave him behind. And Stanley... Blanche thought that she was saying all of this behind Stanley's back, but Stanley actually overhears this one day um, while a train was passing, and this like starts a, f a spark, a fire inside Stanley Kowalski, and he's like, I'm going to destroy Blanche. I'm paraphrasing, but in my perspective, that's pretty much what he comes to. That's the conclusion that he comes to. He's like, in his mind, I'm going to destroy Blanche. And Blanche feels the same way because Blanche wanted to destroy Stanley Kowalski. Um, so, yeah, they set to destroy each other. Blanche, her way was to get Stella to separate with Stanley Kowalski. And Stanley, he just wants, he's, go, he's going to rip away and destroy all of Blanche's illusions. Because Blanche, all the things I told you guys about the, the Flamingo Hotel and the truth about Belle Reve and the truth about this 17-year-old kid, Blanche tries to hide all of this, right? Um, first thing that comes up is that uh, Stanley thought that Blanche was cheating Stella out of her inheritance. He brings up the Napoleonic Code, which means that He's entitled to Stella's inheritance, but it's found out that there is no inheritance because Belle Reeve was foreclosed upon and there's no money. Uh, so Stanley kind of lets that, let that go. But because Blanche is, you know, going against Stanley so much, I mean, if you're homeless, if you have nowhere else to go, if you're not rich anymore and you show up to your sister's doorstep, not begging for a place to sleep, but kind of begging for a place to sleep, you should be humble. Lower yourself, you know, say like, you know, I'll sleep on the floor. As long as I have a roof over my head, I, I have food to eat. I can figure out how to climb up the, the, the success in life again, you know, something like that. But no, Blanche comes in judging and critiquing and trying to break up this marriage. And Stanley's upset about this. And the thing is, like, Blanche, while she's in the, their apartment, she is, like, taking lots of baths. And my mind, you know, my mind who likes to think about reality, I would imagine that their water bill is going up. Uh, because Blanche is, like, bathing like she's getting baptized. Which... I mean, I feel like she was getting baptized because I think her past is so messed up that maybe she had so many suitors and maybe she had so many gentlemen callers that she's trying to wash that ick away, maybe. Because um, she just, whenever she feels uncomfortable, she's bathing and taking a bath, taking a bath, taking a bath. So I'm like, are you baptizing yourself every time? Um, so I'm, you know, that's probably driving up the water bill. Um, Blanche says she's not a drinker, but she's a drunk. She has a, she has a drinking problem. She, she drinks for it. She drinks a lot, a lot. She drinks all of Stanley's alcohol and then she'll say, I'm, I don't drink. It's like a person that's chugging, you know, wine down. And then after drinking the whole bottle of wine saying, I, I, I never drink. I've never tasted alcohol in my life. That's Blanche. 
Um, and she holds herself up like, you know, she's clean, like, you know, she's pure, that she's never, never touched a man in her life, and she has. Um, you know, Stanley, if, if Blanche allowed Stanley to be the king of the household, to be that lion, uh, Blanche could have, I mean, she wouldn't be comfortable, she wouldn't be happy, but she could have stayed with them. But it's because Blanche kept on challenging Stanley and Stanley saw her as a threat that the conflict just kept on getting hotter and hotter and it just burst into flames. Um, so what happens is Stanley Kowalski, although Blanche thought he was stupid, he's not stupid. He pretty much starts an investigation and he has all these connections. He's like getting information about Blanche, getting information about Blanche. Um, and slowly, slowly and gradually, the truth starts to be revealed. The truth about the Flamingo Hotel, the truth about uh, the 17-year-old student, all that truth starts to come into light. And um, Stanley figures, out, figures it out bit by bit. Um, you know, Blanche actually stays with him for a couple of months over the summer. She tries to get Mitch, Stanley's friend, to marry her because she sees, like, the only way that she can get out of poverty, the only way that she can get off the situation that she's in is by getting married. And through illusions, because, first of all, she doesn't go out in the light. She likes the darkness. Um, she likes paper lanterns, so she, like, puts paper lanterns on a light bulb so that people don't really see her face, so that they don't see that she's too old. She doesn't want people to think that she's older than... She She's well, she wants them to see uh, that she's like really young and you know, she's not that young. And um, she really tells Mitch that she's pure and that she's this wonderful sovereign belle and she's different from other girls and she's not. Um, Mitch almost gets married to her, uh, but he doesn't, and Stanley is the cause of that because Stanley reveals the truth to Mitch and Mitch listens to him and he doesn't marry Blanche. Um, the thing is, throughout the summer, Blanche didn't want to have sex with Mitch, and in the play, Mitch, when the truth is revealed to him and he realizes Blanche is a liar, um, Mitch comes in and kind of almost forces himself on Blanche to, to even almost rape her, but she screams and he, he runs away, so, you know, that gets dark. Um, eventually what happens is, um, you know, Stanley reveals the truth to everyone and Stella's baby is due. She, you know, water breaks and she gets rushed to the hospital. Um, and Stanley takes his wife to the hospital. Uh, and then after taking his wife to the hospital, Stanley actually comes back and this is where things Oh my goodness. Uh, all out war. I mean, I don't know. UFC ring, WWE ring, whatever ring you want to throw in. This is reality, truth versus illusion. Reality, you know, the soldier, the man who's all about tell me the truth, tell me how it is, you know, don't lie to me. The man who's been to war, the man who wants to be king of the household versus Blanche, who is this woman that loves illusions, that loves lies, that wants to keep the truth away from people, the truth that she has a, um, a not-so-clean past in, in terms of romance and sex and all that kind of stuff. They come head-to-head, -head, um, and Stanley just tells Blanche what she is. Um, Stanley Kowalski, you know, faces up to Blanche, they argue, they fight, they laugh at each other, they mock each other, they just tackle each other verbally, and then eventually what happens is Stanley rapes Blanche, um, and um, this just breaks her, this breaks her. Um, Blanche always had hope that a man was going to rescue her, some rich man was going to swoop in and rescue her, but that never happens. And Stanley, like this animalistic, you know, thing that he is, he he dominates over Stella, and now he dominates over Blanche, and he puts the nail on the coffin. Uh, first, he, you know, dominates her by revealing all of her 
you know, by them, you know, destroying all of her illusions. Then he puts the final nail on the coffin by raping her. And then he even drives it home by when Stella comes back from the hospital with her baby. Uh, we see a doctor and a nurse come in and take Blanche away to a mental institution because Blanche tells Stella that Stanley raped me and, you know, Stanley Kowalski is, is, is you know, he should leave him and all this kind of stuff and just all this jazz and um, Stella won't believe um, her sister uh, because, I mean, she Stella loves Stanley, so maybe... <laughs> Stella doesn't want to believe Blanche for that. And also, um, Stella doesn't want to... She's a adopt to the new world, to the world after World War II. And she knows that without Stanley, life is going to be very, very bad for her. So she kind of sacrifices her sister, sends her sister to a mental institution, and she stays with her husband, the rapist, and, um, well... They, they have their marriage. Um, Stella is crying over this. I mean, she lost a sister. Uh, and Blanche's world is completely destroyed. And, um, yeah, that, that's the story. That's that's how the, the play ends. Um, Blanche ends up going to a mental institution, and Stanley gets his kingdom back. He dominates over everyone. Like Stanley Kowalski in this play, he dominates over everyone. He dominates over Mitch. He dominates over Stella. Uh, he shows his dominance through his through his violent physical nature. The way that he makes up his with his wife is by having sex with her. Um, I mean, there's this one poker game within the, at the beginning of the play where Stella tries to challenge Stanley's authority. And what Stanley does is he smacks uh, Stella's butt in front of all of his friends to show dominance. And, I mean, you can imagine, you know, because like, he does it with all of his strength, you know. He just, to make all of his friends feel that he has complete control over his household, his wife. And... Um, yeah, he, he smacks her butt to, to, to demonstrate his kingness over his two-bedroom apartment. And when Blanche kept on challenging him, he rapes her to show dominance again. Because he Stanley Kowalski, he does behave like an animal. Um, and everybody recognizes this. And I think a lot of people are afraid of him because he's so violent and so and the things like what's kind of scary is that he's not just violent and, and brutish and cavemanish he shows that he can be smart too because he finds out he he investigates blanche and finds all the truth about her and tells mitch about all the truth about her mm -hmm. uh and tells stella about all the truth about her um and shows that blanche is fake and so that that Blanche's illusions are just illusions and there's no substance there. And she's running away from Laurel, Mississippi, and she has nothing to offer. To, to offer. And also, I mean, you know, Blanche, you know, Stanley Kowalski is a horrible person. But at the same time, Blanche, you know, if she came in uh, and she was humble and let the man be the king of his own house... Uh, you know, she could have just stayed quiet and humble, maybe get a job, may start to make some money and get herself out of there. Uh, but it's the fact that she was challenging Stanley and, and pretty much telling this man that he's nothing, that he's been, that he's beneath her, trying to break up his marriage, trying to break up his home, looking down upon him. He felt challenged. He felt attacked. And if you're homeless, if you if you've lost anything, don't go to somebody to po a poor man's house and try to ruin his life because he's gonna ruin your life even more. And that's what Stanley Kowalski does to Blanche. And Blanche, she can't recover because now she has nothing to rely upon. She thought she was going to be a lady, a Southern Belle, because uh, she was groomed, she was raised in Belle Reve to be a Southern woman, a gentlewoman. A woman of class 
and she wouldn't let that go. Times change after World War II. Stella was able to uh, um, adapt. Mary Stanley go into poverty and just find a way to survive for herself. But Blanche wouldn't let that go. She wouldn't let the life she was promised go. And so she was terminated by the new age, by the new way of life. And um, it's incredibly sad. Uh, but when you try to fight against the times that are changing, it, it really attacks you. Um, so there, there was a way that Blanche could have survived and, and tried to become a new woman. But because she wouldn't let go of the past, Stanley just... Stanley Kowalski just breaks her. Um, in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning here, um, I mean, Stanley Kowalski is a violent uh, brute. Uh, he's an animal. Uh, I mean, again, we see him come, become, like in the play, he comes in with a bloody meat package and chucks it to his wife, and he's like, you know, I mean, there's there's nothing more animalistic than that. Because when animals go to hunt, they hunt and they kill. They, you know, I would imagine they have blood on their face or under and on their mouths, and they would bring the meat to the pack, or the pack would eat. So Stanley brings home the meat. He brings home the bacon. He owns the money. He pays the rent. He he pays for the alcohol, the water, everything. And Blanche tried to challenge him while she was using all of his things that he works for to pay for. And she tries to ruin his life, but he ruins her life. Um, you know, he, he won't let anybody challenge his, his dominance. And even Stella, when Stella tries to, dom tries to challenge his dominance, Stanley Kowalski always puts her in her place. And Stella, you know, she, the way that she acts, she's happy to stay in that place because at least she survives and she doesn't, you know, end up like Blanche. Um, so you do see a clash of, of reality in Stanley, you know, a clash in truth versus Blanche's illusions. And again, illusions cannot save you. Illusions can't help you up adapt to a new world, to a different way of living. Um, I always say to people, you, you have to be able to change with the times. Don't just say you can't learn this or you can't adapt, adapt to that. You have to adapt to every situation that comes your way. Uh, but Blanche couldn't let that go. She couldn't let that dream of being a proper sovereign belle go. Uh, Stella was able to adapt and even though she has to live with Stanley Kowalski, but at least she's alive and she gets to keep on living. Blanche, now she pretty much has to spend the rest of her life in a mental institution. Um, and her reputation, her life, she's lost everything. She's even lost a sister. But Stella will not believe that Stanley Kowalski raped Blanche. And, um, and yeah... So that generation, that Southern Belle generation, the, the generation where Stella and Blanche came from money is 100% gone. And there's no getting it back. I mean, I would even say that at the beginning of the play, you, could, you can recognize this. Because uh, Blanche comes in with these nice, beautiful dresses and jewelry and talking fancy. And from my perspective... If you're wearing rich clothes and rich jewelry, but you don't have the mansion to go along with it or the nice cars and the nice property and the money to go along with it, you just end up wearing a costume. Because in the French Quarter, the dresses and the nice things that Blanche was wearing, they didn't fit in. People didn't wear what she was wearing. And to me, it kind of felt like she was wearing costumes throughout the play because when you lose the money and the estates and the homes, and all you have is the clothes left, you, you're and you, and you know you're living in a poor apartment wearing wealthy people clothes. It just seems like it starts to seem like you're wearing a costume, and 
she tried to put on a play to show that she's still a sovereign belle, but she she was not. The things that she did, you know, with the seventeen year old at the Flamingo Hotel in her life at Belle Reve, you know, the the ways that she behaved, you know, they're not ways that a sovereign belle, a a, a woman who is follow, following social etiquette, it's not ways that they should behave. And even though that Blanche was just trying to keep her past, what she was trying to fight for and keep, it was already gone. And Stanley is the thing that, that really just really rips everything away from her, even the illusions. So now Blanche is left looking at reality and she can't look at reality. She can't face reality. And she just, she was teetering on insanity um, like the play doesn't specifically tell us that she's insane, but it kind of does since she goes away to a mental institution. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's my summary analysis of a streetcar named Desire. You know, ooh, Desire. That's another thing. When you think about the desires that are depicted here, you know, Blanche couldn't let go of her desires. Blanche would, wouldn't would let them go. Stanley wouldn't let his desires go. Stella wouldn't let her desires go. Even Mitch. Mitch, even though that Blanche lied to him, he wasn't really okay with her being kicked out of the, Stan, the Kowalski apartment uh, or household. Um... Because Mitch just wants someone to be married. Like, he just wants to get married with someone. Um, Stella just wants Stanley. Stanley wants Stella. You know, they want their sexual, violent, domestic violence relationship to stay together. Because Stella doesn't want to be on the streets. And Stanley wants to be king over his two-bedroom apartment. And Blanche wants to be a sovereign belle. And someone had to lose. And Blanche is the one that ends up losing I mean, we can say that Stella loses too because her husband is a rapist and her husband rapes her sister and now she has to keep on loving and sleeping with that same man. So the sisters definitely lose here and Stanley Kowalski remains dominant and he wins. He wins. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, reality, the reality that we see within this play is something that it shows you that illusions, illusions can get unraveled. And when they get unraveled, the, the person who loves to stick to an illusions like Blanche, most of the time, it, it pretty much doesn't end well for you. And, um, you know... Lions and animals like Stanley Kowalski, they, they survive. And, you know, Stanley Kowalski is, an, is a lion, is a king of his kingdom that is not going to go down without a fight. And again, this kind of proves why Stella picked him. Because Stella knows that his family didn't stand up for what's theirs. But Stanley Kowalski does. And we see how wonderful it worked out for him because... He stood up for what's his and ruined a woman to keep what's his. Unlike Stella's family, who didn't stand up for what's theirs to keep Belle Reeve, to keep the family rich. They didn't fight to keep the family rich. They mismanaged their finances. But you can imagine that Stanley Kowalski is not a person that's going to lay down and let life take what's his away from him. I mean, when a man pulls the Napoleonic coat on you, you know he means business. <laughs> you, you know he means business. Yeah. But all right. That's all I have to say about this play by Tennessee Williams. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.